In this video, find out what are platinum nanocubes. Here at the University of Belgrade, we are making new nanomaterials for energy-related applications. Noble metal nanoparticles are used as catalysts for fuel cells. These are alternative power sources that produce clean energy and can be used to power cars or various portable devices. A fuel cell is an electrochemical system consisting of anode and cathode covered by a catalyst and electrolyte in between them. Hydrogen or small organic molecules could be used as a fuel while oxygen is the oxidant. Energy is produced by fuel oxidation at the anode and the only side products are clean water and carbon dioxide. Electric surface needs to be as large as possible which is why we use nanomaterials to have highly developed surface. Common platinum nanoparticles have cuboctahedron shape which can be regarded as spherical. Platinum atoms are packed into three different plane orientations, 110, 100 and 111 orientation. So the common nanoparticle includes all three orientations. 100 oriented planes exhibit the best catalytic properties for our purpose. They have the highest resistivity to poisoning by carbon monoxide which is formed as an intermediate in oxidation of small organic molecules. They are the most active and most stable, which is why our goal is to make a nanoparticle that consists of 100 oriented surfaces and that is a nanocube. How can we synthesize such nanoparticles? We use a water in oil microemulsion method. We form a solution that contains nano droplets of water phase with incorporated precursor and capping agent, where a surfactant creates a phase boundary. Capping agent influences the particle shape. With addition of reducing agent, these particles are formed and then supported on a carbon support. Acetone provides precipitation. Now, this is what a synthesis looks like in practice. First, we start by mixing the water solution of precursor and capping agent with the surfactant that forms a phase boundary. We use the magnetic stirrer to mix them. And then we add the non-polar phase, which is haptane. The stirring continues for a certain time. And when a stable microemulsion is formed, we add a reducing agent, sodium borohydrate. After the reduction takes place, the solution changes color from yellow to black. And this is when we add the carbon support and keep stirring for several hours. Acetone is added at the end to cause precipitation overnight. What is left now is to thoroughly wash the precipitate with ultra pure water on a membrane filter using vacuum pump and dry the catalyst in nitrogen atmosphere. At this point, the catalyst is ready for use and we can characterize it electrochemically. For this, we use a 3 electrode compartment electrochemical cell, which is a model for real conditions in a fuel cell. By using the potentiostat to set parameters, we can use cyclic voltammetry to test the catalyst. These results show us with which amount of additive nanocubes were formed. In this case, this is the green line and we can conclude that by the shape of the curve. We see that nanocubes are most active for oxidation of carbon monoxide, also for the oxidation of formic acid, and finally, the most stable for this reaction as well. Other than electrochemistry, there are methods such as X-ray diffraction and high-resolution transmission electron microscopy that can help us determine particle size, which is about 8 nanometers, 
and actually see the shape that we have obtained. Thank you for watching our video. I would like to thank Cost Action eMinds, where Serbia is participating as an inclusiveness target country, for their networking support, which will help us continue our research.